unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. The name of God is powerful. Turn to your other neighbor and tell him God is powerful. Come on, tell your neighbor God is powerful. Powerful. Tell somebody I feel the power of God in the inside of me. Oh, Reba Zabaka Telebo Zipatalea. Oh, I feel the power of God. Tell your neighbor I feel the power of God. Tell yourself I feel you, God. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody worship the Lord.
same church with Apostle M. You remember those days in the church when you didn't have money, you didn't have friends, you were dusty. singing a song that doesn't look like you. Tell my fellow uh, brethren, 
when you're going to get married and somebody tells you I'm interested, tell them, but I'm crazy. I'm a bit crazy. <laughs> you can't handle the heat. Get out of the kitchen. <laughs> get out of the kitchen. Okay, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> you tell them get out of the what? They marry you when they know. You have your moments. You walk in your house and the revelation hits you. <laughs> then you find yourself doing something like Rabba Kante. Then you compose yourself like, like nothing happened. You say, I'm sorry. Holy mercy. From in my mind, it is for your sake. But if I'm out of my mind, man, there was a time we used to pray for people and they die. You lay hands and the person dies. And the pastor calls you and tells you, the moment you laid hands on him, he died. So when they start to leave and I scream, understand. Tell your neighbor when they start to leave and I scream, understand. Hey. 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 Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 15. If you're there, you say amen. Say amen like you're Christians. Amen. Now, the Bible says, All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness. And there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every time I read that verse, I... I, 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 I hey, la costa. Something in me just kicks and says, that's not you. Okay. Now, the Bible says... Let's read it again one more time. One, two, three, let's go. <clears throat> All things have I seen... In the days of my vanity, there is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in wickedness. There is a man who is just, he's a good guy, and the Bible says, and he dies in his righteousness. The word they are dying is relative. Anything can be death. Don't just think about physical. Think about every aspect of life that represents itself as death, right? Some people die financially. Some people die in their relationships. Some people die in their education. Some people die in, in their careers. Some die at their jobs. Some die in, they die in many aspects. So he says a righteous man perishes in his righteousness. And there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in wickedness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. This Thursday, hopefully, and maybe next Thursday, and maybe the other one, depending on how God shall move my spirit, because I have about three parts on this. If he wills, I'll do two or three. It depends on him. But I have three parts on this. I want to address a particular situation that I've seen common among men. It's common among men, and sadly, saints. And I want to address that. Okay? Let me give you example, exactly what I'm trying to explain here. There are some people who say, before I became born again, I was successful. Some. That's the truth. Right? Or probably my job was successful. When I became born again, my job started failing. Or oh, before I became born again, 
I was in a wonderful relationship. When I met Jesus, my relationship started to fail. Or oh, some of them compare themselves with their other relatives. They say, I am born again. I'm the only born again lady in my family. And perhaps the only one who knows God. And my other sisters and brothers who are not believers, they are successful. And me which is a believer, I am what? I'm failing. Some compare themselves with other friends. They say, me, I pray more than Rita. I fast more than Rita. Apostle, I give more than Rita. But why is it that Rita, she comes sometimes and prays, sometimes she doesn't pray. Sometimes she attends for Nero, sometimes she doesn't attend. She's not even submitted to the ministry, but she's a success. Me, I am praying, I am serving God in the ministry, everything is, I'm doing everything that is necessary in the church, but I am failing. Why? I never aborted, but I failed to have children. The two women who aborted four, you gave her the fifth one, God, Why? <laughs> Do I have a witness in here? Come on, help me. And somebody says, but apostle, I have believed this word. I have confessed this word. I am a New Testament preacher, but I'm still begging. Why? There's a problem. Why is it that I'm still believing you for a meal, yet I believe this word to be true? I even speak it. I even preach the depth. <laughs> Of the mystery of Christ at campus when I meet my fellow friends I sit them down in a group and then I start to show them the mystery of Christ why is it that I am what? failing what is wrong with me? we seem like we have something in our family that never leaves it's like a generational thing it happened to my mother we have prayed we have even confessed new testament confessions i'm not under the law i'm under grace i'm more than a conqueror by christ which strengthens me if a man is born again is a new creation in christ behold the old is past and now and the new and all things are of god i have confessed it and said that i'm not i cannot be I cannot be following my father's footsteps. I can't be like my auntie. I, no familiar spirits. I'm a new creature. Vichy, no demon. You confess the scriptures that in that day none shall say that I am sick. You confess the scripture and say in that day you say that the fathers shall not eat of bitter fruits and their children's teeth are set on the edge. But God, my teeth are set on the edge because of my father's bitter fruit. Yet I read the Bible. I confess right. I say everything right. But the more I think I'm saying it, the more I'm failing. Do you know there are people who, have, who became worse when they became born again? And then when they go for counseling, they tell him, Ah, you see, when you're born again, God first treats you very well in a few weeks. Because you're a baby. Then as you continue growing, God says, Ah, now cut it away, change you. You have to stop being funny. I'm not going to treat you like a baby. Now God starts to bring their hard stuff on you. Oh, some even say, Ah, you know why these things are fighting you? He said, no, ah, it's because you've crossed, you're in another, you're in another kingdom now, the devil is, is trying to what? To, yes, the devil is attacking you because you've what? You've crossed. Now what you do, you have to endure, you know? <laughs> then Christians develop hard skin, you understand? <clears throat> you understand? But if you were to draw a video, a video of how they relate with the devil, right? Huh? Their definition of spiritual warfare is they're like this with the devil and he's punching. Pua! 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 Never give up. Pua! Pua! Then they remember the scripture. If he hits the other side, give him the other side too. Pua! Pua! Then they come out with swollen lips, swollen eyes, you know. But it's spiritual. But the physical sense also is beaten. So he comes in big space and says, I thank God that I survived an accident. I thank God that I was, my face is swollen, but I thank God I didn't die. Oh, so. That's not how you're supposed to live. Tell your neighbor, that's not how you're supposed to live. Okay, they might not understand you. Tell him that's not my story. Tell him. 
So when you read the scriptures and then they say, Oh, I am come that you might have life, life to the fullest, joy unspeakable, joy unspeakable, full of glory. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. What do you mean? What do you mean by joy unspeakable when I slept hungry? What do you mean by, okay, let me force myself to laugh. <laughs> Give me the message version. They said, whom having not what? You never saw him yet, you love him. You still don't see him yet, you trust him with laughter and singing. And you say, wait a minute, apostle. Me, I don't laugh in my house. I don't laugh in my house. I sleep. You don't know how I sleep. You know the people here were smiling, but the way you sleep. You don't even want to go back home. You don't even want to go back home, believe me. You're going to look back and say, ah, my bed. Ah, yeah, yeah. Even the thought of how your bed looks like. You understand? And then you stop looking like, and then you try so much to look like what you're not. You understand? You look different from your home. You look different from your bed. You look different from your... Hey, yeah. Am I making sense? Then you get promises. You confess, you jump, you scream, and then again you go back to zero. One year, two years, three years, ten years, fifteen years. Then you say, ah, it seems there's a problem with this church. Then you go to another one. <laughs> then you do everything right. Okay, sometimes the problem is with the ministry, but that's another thing. Then some of them, it's not even the ministry. It's the person who say, ah, ah. It seems now this guy is not deep. Let me go to Apostle Grace. <laughs> then you listen to the scripture and then you say, ah, this one also. Then it's too deep. <laughs> I want to get something a bit simple. And let me tell you, you can go around, they can pray for you. You can go for counseling, go for deliverance, go for prophecy, go for evangelism, go for preaching. And again back to the whole cycle and your life will never change one bit. One bit. And because of indifference, you get tired of one thing, you enter another. Then that one also fails you. Then you get out of that, you get into another. And then you start to look at your life and honestly, you're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself. You don't have results. You don't have results. You're honestly not happy. You can pretend to be, but you're not happy. I'm rich, yes. In your heart, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's why I want to take these three or four sessions, two or three sessions, depending on how God will do it. I want to fix that once and for all. <laughs> once and for all. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says that our weapons are not what? Cannon. But they are mighty in Christ for the pulling down of strongholds. They cast down imaginations. Praise the Lord. They break every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. And they bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Are you hearing me? Now the next line says, having all readiness to revenge all disobedience. When your obedience is coming, God will deal with any disobedience around you. When your obedience is coming, what is your part? What is your part? You understand what I'm saying? Some people say, ah, you know, deliverance. You look at Jesus. Jesus Christ drew the standard. He drew the standard. He drew the standard. That is why the Bible says that your obedience, when the obedience comes in in Romans, has come abroad upon all men. That's what it says. And it says, I would rather have you wise and to that which is good and very simple concerning evil. What happens? Next verse. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. You're not supposed to spend 20 years fixing an issue. You're not supposed to spend 30 years fixing an issue. He says he shall bruise the what? Satan under your feet shortly. Shortly. Somebody say shortly. shortly. Say shortly. shortly. That means you're not supposed to take 20 years. What does the message version say? Begin from up 19. 
And so while there has never been any question about your honesty in these matters, I could be more proud of you. I want you also to be, to be smart. Making sure every good thing is the real thing. Don't be gullible in regard to smooth talking, smooth talking evil. Stay alive like this. And he says, and before you know it, before you know it, the God of peace will come down on Satan with both feet, stomping him into the dirt. Enjoy the best of Jesus. Come on. He says, before you know it, before you know it, that's the word shortly, very quickly. He says, before, and I love, you see, when the guy of the message was rising, he even put, a, you know, he's like me, I, I envision everything in the scriptures. I don't just think it, I envision it. You see, when he says, and before you know it, the God of peace will come down on Satan with both feet. I imagine God, Satan, there is your God! <laughs> And he crushes him shortly and stomps him into the dirt. Then after stomping him, he tells him, he tells you, enjoy Jesus. <laughs> after every stomp, he says, enjoy Jesus. Tell your neighbor, enjoy Jesus. Tell him again, tell the other one and tell him, enjoy Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is supposed to be joy. You're supposed to be happy being born again. Men are supposed to look at you and say, Man, I want what is in that guy. I don't know what is coming out of him, but boy, he's happy. And indeed, you look back and you're happy. You sit, and, you know, there's some people, and that's why I hate certain lines. Me, I don't care. Even if I sleep hungry, as long as I have Jesus. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Both of you can cry, but it's better to cry in a Mercedes. <laughs> when you put on air conditioner, it's better. There's another one at the bus go. Come on, don't bore us. You can still be happy in a Mercedes and go to heaven. It's possible. When I read that scripture and I realized that God is interested to kill the devil shortly, I said, whoa, this is where we are at. We are not having men wise unto that which is good. We're having men wise unto that which is evil. We're telling them everything the devil can do. We're not telling them nothing about who God is and what He can do in their lives. When we're not exalting God in the service, we exalt the devil in the service. The devil is crawling like a lion, seeking for whom to devour. He's a god of fire. You see. So every time they come, the praise of God, they come like. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Why? Because something can fall on you any time. <laughs> that song is for men which have not met God. When you meet God, you stand on the rock of salvation. <laughs> He becomes Christ, the solid rock on which you stand. And all other ground is sinking sand. Somebody say amen. amen. So when I realize that it's actually intended by God to deal with those issues shortly, I realize he, people are taking 20 years to fix stuff. One year. And we're even preaching to them someone's of waiting on the Lord. But the definition of waiting on... Let me tell you, by the way. Do you know the literal definition of waiting on the Lord? One time I was studying it in the scriptures and I was shocked that the literal line from the root word defining as waiting on the Lord is a situation where a man was walking and stood and allowed God to go ahead of him. That's what they call waiting on the Lord. Some people think waiting on the Lord eh, is sitting in passive abandonment and waiting. If he comes, he comes. If he doesn't come. If he intervenes, he intervenes. If he doesn't intervene, mm-hmm. And then they bring very funny lines. Ah, you know it's not yet time. You know it's yet yet time. Okay, when is it? When is it time for you to get married? The signs are clear. If you burn, 
Woo-wee. Paul said it. It's not me. He says, brethren, if you burn, marry. You see, already you're burning and you're saying, it's not yet time. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Who are you burning? Hallelujah. So, Ecclesiastes said that he was once in this world and then he saw in his days of vanity, he saw righteous men perishing and then he saw wicked men prolonging. I saw something in the Psalms, in Psalm 73 verse 3. Something happened to David. Similar issue with some of you. He says, for as envious are the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Next verse. He says, For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Listen, these are wicked men. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain, and violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more, they have more than heart could wish. Imagine, these are wicked guys. Read in the Message Bible. From three. He says, from three, come on, here. I was looking the other way, looking up to the, up to the people, at the top envying the wicked who have made it. He said, do have nothing to worry about. Not a care in the whole world. Pretentious with arrogance, they wear the latest fashions in violence. Pampered and overfed. Decked out in silk bows of silliness. They jeer, using words... To kill, they bully their way with words. Now, they are full of water, loud mouth, whatever it is. But you see, it disturbed the guy that they were rich guys, they were blessed, they were waxing fat. Their heart could not wish for anything. And they were what? Wicked. He was in a similar situation too. He was disturbed that the wicked were prosperous. And him as a believer, he was getting back. Losing it every day. Every day. Let me show you something. A certain confession he made again in Psalms 10. Verse 4. He says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. That is true. The next verse says, His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight, for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He's proud. Now, this is important here. He said, he has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. This is a wicked man. Hey, hey, don't, don't move any further. He said, he's wicked. But in his heart he said, I shall not be moved. And I shall never be in adversity. He said it in his heart. He didn't speak it with his mouth. He said it in his heart and said, Even though I'm wicked, I will never be moved. He said, Even if I'm wicked, like how? I will never see adversity. And then the man comes under the earth and sees righteous men which are dying and wicked men prolonging their days. Because in the time when the righteous is supposed to say those words the wicked is saying them the wicked knows how to speak the right way the righteous is speaking the wrong way listen it doesn't matter how deep you are as long as you regard certain things in your heart that's the beginning somebody comes and tells you apostle uh, we have believed for for jobs in our family, we failed to get them. I ask her, who told you you don't get them? He says, because of these years, who told you? It has nothing to do with how many years your family has failed to get the jobs. It has everything to do with what your heart believes. Yeah. Oh no, apostle. Me, I have done everything right, but I have failed. Who told you? Because I've looked at everything. I've looked, I've seen the pattern. Every time I'm going to do this, this happens. Who told you? Okay, why do you see the pattern? Wicked men expect worse, but they refuse. And they say, I refuse to be moved. He becomes wicked 
And then he sees judgment. He says, I refuse to be moved. I shall not be put in adversity. And then he prolongs his day. Because of faith. And then the righteous sees something. And he says, God, I've moved. Oh God, help me not to see adversity. You even consider you will see. Let me not fall in the hands of my enemy. You even consider to fall in the hands of your enemy. You have regarded it in your heart. Listen, never forget this. Your heart speaks as clear as your mouth. Some of you, you didn't confess the wrong way. But your heart spoke the wrong way. You remember in Genesis 17, 17, when the Lord told Abraham, you're going to have children. The Bible says Abraham laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? But God knew and heard Abraham. God knew and heard Abraham. He didn't say it with his mouth, but it was recorded by God that Abraham did not believe. He didn't say it with his mouth. Some of you think you have to first say it for it to carry sense. No. Even if you don't say it with your mouth, but you've said it in your heart, it is as good as... You see, you remember when Jesus is going to Lazarus' tomb? He says, I thank you because you are here me. He didn't pray with his mouth. He prayed with his heart. He prayed with his heart. He executed a situation with his heart. And he says, but I'm speaking for the sake of these guys who are hearing me that they might believe. That means if Jesus was not with these guys, you would have, have just seen an epic picture of him walking on a grave. Lazarus died, coming out. Then they walk back together. You don't even see anything else. Why? Because the operation of your heart is as clear to God as the operation of your mouth. They are as clear. They are as clear. Your heart's words are the same words of your mouth. I'll show you a scripture. Matthew 12, verses 34. If you're there, you say, Amina. Come on. It says, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, so the mouth speaketh. Did you hear that? Give me the amplified of that. He says, Oh, generation of spring of vipers, how can you speak good things when you're evil, wicked? For out of the fullness, the overflow of the superabundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Did you hear that? The order of the spirit is that whatever filleth a man's heart will come out of his lips. If you want to know a man's heart, listen to what he speaks. If you want to know a man's heart, listen to what he speaks. Oh, apostle, I failed. That means, you see, listen. Look at this situation. By the time the Bible says that you have carried a fullness, an overflow, and a superabundance for you to speak, it means whether you want it or not, there is a literal experience where you filled yourself with that word of failure. That's why it's overflowing out of your mouth. The problem then is not the failure. The problem is how did you feed your spirit to overflow to that experience? You considered patterns. You considered your life and saw what you're going through. And then you say, oh, this is who I am. Some of you, you have refused to believe that you're not what you are physically. You have refused to admit it in your heart. Even after here, you're going to come for prayers and say, I'm supposed to pray for me, I'm sick. How? How? That's why we're reducing counseling. Because the word has answers. Listen to the sermons, Apostle Grace. Listen, there is nothing you come for counseling for that is not in the sermons. It's not there. So I realize we're even spoiling people. Even Jesus never counseled. He talks. But I'm asking. He talks. But people, I'm talking to you. Let me use that word. You refuse the word. And when you come again, we give you the word. There is nothing else we give you. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Answer me. So, he, he says, out of that mouth, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart. The next verse says, listen. The good man, uh-huh, from his inner good treasure, flings forth good things. And the evil man, out of his inner evil storehouse, flings forth evil. That means that your heart is a storehouse. You fill it with the wrong stuff, it overflows, you speak it. 
that your heart is a storehouse. You fill it with the wrong stuff, it comes out of your mouth. Praise God. Next verse says, But I tell you, on the day of judgment, men will have to account for every idol. Now listen, inoperative, non-working word they speak. I'm going, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to make it, and then you don't. Then the angels tell you, uh-huh. Why did you confess you're going to make it? Some people think idol words, he's speaking silly. It's not speaking silly. I'm talking to a person who knows how to confess right, but they don't have results. You're speaking the right stuff, but it's inoperative. It's not working. And God judges me and says, why did you waste the anointing? Come on, it's not me. It's the gospel. Can you believe that God takes it that serious? Don't say stuff that is not working. If it's not, first fix yourself. Because I want to execute everything you say shortly. That means the day you open your mouth to confess anything that you know is supposed to operate in your life, it better work. It better work. And the next verse says, For by your words, the Bible says, you will be justified and acquitted, and by your words, you will be condemned and sentenced. But many people don't know the seriousness. You know, recently I was meditating and the Lord took me to that scripture of the rich guy who died. And then he went to hell. And all his days were merry. You remember that guy? And the scriptures say that when he was in the Hades, in hell, the Bible tells us he screamed to God and told him, tell Lazarus to get a drop of what? Yeah, he cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I'm tormented in this flame. And the Holy Ghost asked me, imagine this man is in a flame, but the part burning most is the tongue. He's in the Hades. He's in hell. He's burning. He's burning. If you were thrown in a, in a, in a tank of boiling oil, would the first thing that burns be your mouth, your, your tongue? No. To be your body, you'd say, oh, let him send something to cool my body. No, he says, to cool my tongue. To cool my tongue. That's how serious the tongue is. James says it can set hell ablaze. It can set hell ablaze. This thing here. <laughs> this thing here. It is powerful. It is very powerful when you say we have failed as a family. Do you know what you've done to yourself? That's an idol word. You're seeking help, I understand. But how did you feel it in your spirit to say that we have failed? How do you say it? How? Even if it is so, how do you say it? He says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. I have a sermon called Words. Get it. It's beautiful. Some of you have not listened to it. It's called Words. Get it. It's a beautiful sermon. It will make sense in some of the things I'm sharing now. Because I go deep into the words. You understand what I'm saying? So, he says, death and life and the power of the tongue. Give the amplified. The amplified. He says, death, come on, and life are in the power of the tongue. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or life. When you understand that, you realize cancer can't kill you. Do you know, when a doctor comes and tells you, you have cancer, do you know what they've said? <laughs> do you know that many, of, many people, you, you realize this, somebody can live with HIV for 20 years and be okay, and then the day they tell him you have HIV, he starts to fall sick. That day. That day. Because it, he admitted, he was suspecting, but he was okay. <laughs> he refused to feel it in his heart. And then he ate nice food. And then he says, ah, but no, I think I'm healthy. <laughs> and then the day they tell him, you have. They say, wow. Boom. They start a downward spiral and die. 
It's not HIV that killed them. It's the tongue of the person who said it. And they admitted it in their heart. Do you know that the first experience of any man created in the image of God is faith? Psychologists call it denial. They say, don't deny. You see, then they start convincing you. I know I'm getting in trouble. But that's all right. <laughs> Jesus didn't walk with medicine. <laughs> he walked with life. He walked with life. He walked with life. He walked with life. Tell your neighbor, he walked with life. Tell him he walked with life. Then somebody starts to say, don't give me sugar. I am diabetic. Why? And honestly, your heart is too full of diabetes. Your heart is too full of diabetes. Not your body. Your heart is too full of diabetes. But the day you eat that sugar, you're going to die. Why? Because your heart is full. If, listen, if a man has stored life in his heart. The Bible says that the spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity. Well, well, listen, the spirit, the spirit within man, that spirit within you. He says he shall sustain. And I will define something in the spirit next Thursday about how the spirit does it. And I want to show you how. Okay. He says he shall sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? Nobody can bear. Nobody can bear. That means nobody can help it. Nobody can help it. No doctor can heal you when your spirit is sick. No medicine can heal you when your spirit is sick. I'm telling you. Me, I swallowed TB drugs for eight months and I coughed again. Until I went to God and I told him, boss, I've lost faith in the, these things. Then he told me that's what I was waiting for. He healed me. I'm not moved by what I feel. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I feel. Hallelujah. Now you're singing unbelief. Some of you are singing in unbelief. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I see. Hallelujah. I'm not moved. By what I see, Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I hear. <laughs> I'm not moved by what I hear. Hallelujah. I am moved by the word of the Lord. <laughs> oh. Tell your neighbor I'm a success baby I'm a success baby I'm a success I am a success I'm increasing I'm wise I'm increasing I'm multiplying Oh I'm not moved by what doctors say I'm not moved by what people say I'm not moved by the economy I'm not moved by the news I'm not moved by CNN. I'm not moved by NTV. I'm not moved by Hello Uganda. Oh, sit, sit. Somebody's about to explode here. I feel a certain heart. It is being pumped. What is coming out of you? I have not seen. I'm pumping somebody. I'm starting to look at your life. The next two years. The next three years. The next four years. I'm saying, Who is this? They will look at you and say, Is this not the son of Joseph? Whose mother is Mary? Whose sisters and brothers dwell in Jerusalem? 
because you're going to stop looking like your father's son. Listen, the man from Hades, the man from Hades, the first thing he wants is a cooling of his stand. Because let me tell you something. Even in the Hades, there is judgment on the tongue. Even in the Hades, there is judgment on the tongue. He says, let him cool it. You cannot speak words that are inoperative. You cannot speak words that are inoperative. So it's not even your mouth, it's your heart. You remember in Genesis when God was dealing with Noah? Let me show you something with Noah. Genesis 8, 21. The Bible says, The Lord smelt a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cast the ground. He didn't say it with his mouth. Now, some of you don't understand how serious it is that Moses picked something from God's heart. <laughs> God didn't say just with his mouth only. Moses saw a certain experience and he entered the heart of God and heard the words of God. And you see, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That when a man starts to draw close to God, you reach a certain place where he doesn't need to speak with his mouth. You hear his heart speaking. And you pick the vibes. You pick the vibes. When I was growing up, there was a small thing, a small placard my father put in his house. Eh? It had very nice pictures. I, I think we still have it at home. And it used to say, silence makes the real conversation between friends. Not the saying, but the never needing to say is what counts. I remember that stuff. I remember mom remembers that word. I, 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 I said, realize, okay, you can actually get to a point where you and God are quiet, but you're talking. <laughs> Not the saying, but the never needing to say. Because you heard in the heart. He says, that's the real conversation between you and God. When you're there, you're seated quiet, but you're enjoying the deepest fellowship. And then a man makes it religious. I am I'm fellowshipping with God. Makaba kaba. You see, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Almost 80% of my personal devotion with God is quietness. Me. I don't spend 80% of my hours in baga 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 baga. Baga baga baga. Sandwich, sandwich, sandwich. No. Because there are times when I don't need to say nothing. I hear he's speaking. I'm also speaking. We shall speak. When I speak in tongues, it's for your sake. Baga, baga, baga. Some of you. It doesn't mean I don't speak in tongues. I do. I do. Quite honestly, I do. But I don't do it religiously. I don't do it because I saw a man praying. He says, I was praying for 20 days. Then even me, I go on a prayer mountain. Baga, baga, baga. You see, that's when your prayers start to become idol. Because they are not inspired by the Holy Ghost. They are traditional. They are traditional. You're speaking traditional tongues. And then you ask yourself why you don't have results. Why? God anointed us when we were quiet. Because your heart was speaking. If he prompted your mouth to speak, that's okay. I'll bust out and speak tongues for hours. But there are times he tells me, shut up. Let me speak. And then I'm just there. I'm just there. And I'm enjoying it. And then I come out and I'm loaded. I am loaded. I am loaded. Some of you can't even shake my hand sometimes on Thursday because it's too much. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, he said in his heart, I will not again cast the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth and neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I, as I have done. Then he set a principle in the next verse. And he says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, Day and night shall not cease. From that day God set a principle. He said the only deliverance for man is to allow them to understand the seed principle and harvest. Because even God functions by that. What does Proverbs 21 say? I want to show you something. 23. He says, Who saw, whether unbeliever or not, right? Who saw, keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. That's true. The moment you keep your mouth, you keep your soul from trouble. 
regardless of any situation, never confess stupid stuff on you. Never, never, never. It, let me tell you. And then somebody says, what if I die? You've already said it. <laughs> what if I die? You've said it already. You're going to die. Why do you even assume you can die? Why do you even assume you can die? Why do you assume you can die? Let me show you something about the ascendant pattern. I want to show you something. Let me show you something very interesting. Ezekiel. Ezekiel, are you there? 37 verse 14. I saw something very wonderful and I want to show it to you. The Bible says, He shall put and shall put, this was God talking to Ezekiel. He said, I shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place in you in your own land and then shall you know that I the Lord have spoken it, comma, and perform it. You see, understand the order of the spirit. God does not perform what he has not spoken. Even God does not perform what he has not spoken. Never forget that. He doesn't. He first speaks it and then he performs it. That's the order of the Spirit. In the beginning, the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the earth. Then he says, let there be. You see that? And then it was. That's the principle. Even with God, the Bible says, he calleth the things that are not as though they are. Then they become. Nothing in this world will become until you speak it. Nothing. Nothing. That's why he says, for as long as the earth remaineth, seed, time, and harvest. Luke 8, 11, The parable is that the seed is the word. When the word comes out of your spirit, the next thing is doing. If you think you're going to do what you've never said, you're deceiving yourself. Even God doesn't do it. Even God doesn't do it. Let me show you a mystery. <laughs> John 14, 10. You're never going to forget this. You're never going to forget this. John 14, 10. The Bible says, this is Jesus. Jesus says, Believest thou not, now listen to the wording, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. This is Jesus. And he says, And the words, listen, that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, I thought the next verse was going to say, He speaketh them. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The next line says, But the Father that dwelleth in me, He doeth the works. I don't know that you get it. When Jesus is speaking, God starts to work. <laughs> God didn't speak also. No, he didn't add any word. He says, Believe us not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Every miracle in the life of the Christ is a spoken word and an execution by the Father. That's the relationship. When you set your mind on speaking the word, God sets his mind on working. He doesn't waste time. The moment you set your mind to speaking, God does not waste his time. He starts working. Because every word spoken of the Christ is the working of the Father. To God there are works. What shall we do that we might do the works of God? He says, this is the work of God. That you might believe His only Son, Jesus. The one true, Him. You believe the words that are spoken. Because every time you believe the word, for example, when you say, the Bible says He was wounded for our transgressions. Certain things enter your body and they start to kill viruses. <laughs> he was bruised for our iniquities. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you remember those, those, those guys who are, who are narrating theatrical trailers of movies? You remember those guys? Who remembers those things? Our old years, we used to watch Renegade. Who remembers Renegade? 
he was a cop and good at his job and actions are taking place but he committed the ultimate sin and testified against it. the cops gone bad <laughs> you remember the cops have tried to kill him but got the woman he loved instead framed from murder now promise about lying the bounty hunter the renegade <laughs> now, boom, boom, boom. actions are taking place <laughs> So when you start quoting scripture, I am rich. Angels start assembling money. <laughs> Angels start assembling money, I am rich. Angels start assembling money. Then you say, I don't know what is happening in our family. We are poor, then they pick it. Some, some guy starts to think about you. Starts to sink. Then he imagines when you're with him. Then you say, I don't know why in our family we get married. We don't get married. <laughs> then he says, Hey, but she has a big ear. She has a big ear. The ear is too big. the women who get married they don't look it they bypass women with very straight bodies <laughs> then they go to these ones the rest is not to the swift neither the battle to the strong neither bread to the men of skill but chance <laughs> listen I have seen people who get married and like Musumba, what's up? Kumbe. They knew how to make themselves. They knew how to make themselves wives. And then somebody else had beauty deceived her. She thought they only marry beauty. Okay. Wait. Inward. The Bible calls it. Not fine apparel of gold and silver. But out of that which is the inward beauty of the incorruptible, that gentle and mixed spirit, which in the eyes of God is priceless. A woman's generosity makes her big nose become smaller. Come on. Then for you think you're going to have a very nice nose with a stupid attitude. Married men, help me here. It's more than what you see. Tell you anybody, it's more than what you see. Tell it to them again. Tell them it's more than what you see. That's what makes a man, a husband, a wife. It's more than what you see. And it, what you see can't be bought by money. It can't. It can't. Now, start to understand that whether you've spoken it with your mouth or it's in your heart, admit it. The moment your heart admits it, angels execute. Angels execute. Oh, I think I'm failing. You start, demons start coming. Every demon around you, you see, whosoever keepeth his mouth, saves his soul from trouble. The moment you start speaking stupid stuff, every demon in this world will bring trouble on you every demon and then you're going to say it was a generational curse it wasn't a generational curse it was your mouth oh it's my family's already it's your mouth it has nothing to do with your generation your curses your new creation all of us know it but your mouth is not new your mouth is not new Mark 11. Tell your neighbor, the Father speaketh through me, and it doeth the works. Have you seen that? The moment Jesus spoke, he says, Little girl, wake up. 
the Father executed. That's the oneness of the Christ and the Father. Mark 11, 23. He says, For verily, I say unto you, Whosoever, born again or not born again, answer me. Hey, yeah. Born again, wicked or not. Wicked or not. Wicked or not wicked. He said, Whosoever, whether he's wicked or not, whosoever shall say, some people say, that's for believers. No, it's not for believers in Christ. It is for believers, just people who believe, general. Even men in the world, they just say, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And that's it. Some people think that the Bible was written for believers in Christ only. No. Even if a man doesn't believe in Christ but gets this principle, he will get results. Because it's a principle, seed and harvest. Seed and harvest. That's why it says they shall eat the fruit of it. That means that every word is a seed. Every word is a seed. Every word is a seed. That's why it says they shall eat the fruit of it. For death or life, you'll either eat the fruit of life or the fruit of death. Because every word is a seed. For the parable is that the seed is the word. Okay? Now let's go back. He says, whosoever, open your eyes please, anybody shall say unto this mountain, underline the word say. That's, that's number one. Be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, the word is back again, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Three times. Now I want to show you something. Give me that scripture in the Amplified. Message. Yeah, thank you. He said, this, he says that nothing will be too much for you. This mountain, for instance, you just say, go jump into the lake. This is a mountain. He says, no shipling, no shilly shalling. And it is as good as done. Because the mind of God is the moment you speak something, eh, it's done. Okay. If we, we understand, I went to that line. Eh? If we understand it that way, and then you say, in our family, we don't get married. Apostle, I failed to get a job. But I've come for counseling. I'm trying to tell you the reality. Is what? It's done. I wanted to follow that line because it was important. When I read in the message, I was amazed that the Bible says it is as good as that when you speak it. Now let's go back to KJV. So when KJV says that when you say to this mountain, number one, be ye removed and be cast in the uh, to the sea and shall not doubt in your heart but shall believe those things which you have said that means you also have to get to a point where you believe your words believe your words believe them before you believe the action believe them believe your tell your neighbor believe your words tell him again believe your words yes he says for really I say unto you that whosoever shall say one to this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Then he shall have whatsoever he said. That means the, the Bible. Now let's look for the word believe. How many times is believe written there? Whosoever shall say, number one, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, one, that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. It means for every three, for every one, one word I believe. <laughs> God would require the stressing of what he said three more times than what, how much you believe. It means sometimes even if you don't believe, just say. 
You might not believe that the lame man is walking. Believe your words. And leave the results to God. He said believe once and the saying was three times. Because to God it's important that you first say. Even if you believe how. But your saying is wrong. You're never going to get the results. You're never going to get the results. You're never going to get the results. I told people a story one time. One of my relatives came here and told me. They told me I have HIV. I told her, you having HIV. You, no. Let's go again back to the doctor. We went to a business and I told her, check her. You'll find she doesn't have HIV. How can she have HIV? I refused in my spirit that my relatives should have HIV. They checked again and didn't find it there. It knows where it went. But I refused to believe that my relative had HIV. I refused it. Now if you want to call it healed, that's okay. If you want to say the first doctor saw wrong, that's your problem. It's your mouth. Whether the doctor saw wrong or not, I refused that she has HIV. I refused it. And it was also a test of blood. They see it. And then next time they can't see it. We didn't even negotiate. Why? Because I told my, my God, I will never bury my siblings of HIV. I told God that it's in my spirit. My children, I refused it. I refused it long ago. It's not in my system and it will never happen. It will never happen. I refused it. I refused it. You have to put it in your head. One time I was at Kampala Health Center, we were counseling people. And there was a woman who had lived with her husband four years HIV positive, and she was negative. So we asked them, do you guys use condoms? What do you do? She said, me, I refused to fall sick. I said, <laughs> I said, is the Nagano Kuala? Musa was the Nagano. Honestly. We're telling her, but don't, can't you use some other means to, don't tempt God. She says, the gospel is foolishness. It is foolishness. Then you hear some people saying, I'm not going to marry her. She has sickle cells. Change them. Make them normal. You don't have any biblical, any biblical scripture that can back you up for refusing two couples to get married because they have sickle cells. It's not there. But I have a scripture that can allow them. <laughs> now look at what Apostle Grace is telling people. I think he's telling them, no. Listen, whether you're saying, oh I'm not, let God be true. I don't give a damn what you think. I don't give a damn what you think. Let God be true. Let God be true. And every man a liar. If she's sick, get out HIV out of her body and marry her. Get it out and marry her. Just get it out and marry her. If God says you're going to live together, does that mean HIV can stand before you? No. Whosoever the Lord joineth, let no man lay asunder. Get the HIV out. Some point they just say, you go your way. <laughs> it's not the will of God. But you saw God. Get it out. Tell your neighbor, get it out. Get it out. Get the HIV out and marry the guy. It's possible. Somebody say amen. amen. Isaiah 62, I'll finish with that. Ah, give me the message version. Message. Listen to how God summarized the life. He says, regarding Zion, I can't keep my mouth shut. I can't. I speak about them every day. You're wonderful. You're awesome. You are anointed. You're increasing. You're going up. He says, I don't shut up. And he says, regarding Jerusalem, I can't hold my tongue. Until what? 
until her righteousness blazes down like the sun and that salvation flames up like a torch. I can't keep quiet. If God cannot keep quiet, don't keep quiet. Say it every day, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm above, I know the knee, I'm the head, I know the tail, I'm more than a conqueror. But Christ, don't keep quiet. Every day I'm getting married, I'm getting married. Wave your ring. When there's nothing on your finger, say, Ooh, go, baby. But don't keep quiet. Next verse. Foreign countries, now he's speaking, <laughs> will see your righteousness and world leaders, your glory. Oh, hey, you get a brand new name straight from the mouth of God. You'll be a stunning crown in the palm of God's hand, a jeweled gold cup held high in the hand of the Lord. He'll say, This is Apostle Grace. This is Apostle Grace. And he's flying in Russia. This is Apostle Grace. When you're preaching, he says, Preach, preach, preach. And then the angels stand up. And then Paul gives Peter a high five. And he says, Rabba Philip. Next verse. He says, No more will anyone. No more will anyone call you rejected. Your country, Uganda, will not be called third world. You'll be called heavy, Hefziba, my delight, and your land, Eula, married, because God delights in you. And your land will be like a marriage or wedding celebration. He says, for as a young man marries his virgin bride, so your builder marries you. And as a bridegroom is happy in his bride, so your God is happy with you. I've posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem, day and night. They keep at it praying, calling out, reminding God to remember, remember her, remember her, remember her. God is like, stop, remember her. They are to give him no peace until he does what he said, until he makes Jerusalem as famous as the city of praise. Hallelujah. Ah, give the Lord a mighty hunger. Come on, clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. You're not clapping. Can you give God some Holy Ghost noise? Somebody say amen. Verse 7 says, They will give him no peace. They are spiritual entities that can't let God sleep until your stuff goes through. He doesn't have peace. Next verse. He says, God has taken a solemn oath, an oath he means to keep. Never again will I open your grain filled bunch to your enemies to loot and eat. Never will foreigners drink the wine that you worked so hard to produce. He says, No, the farmers who grow the food will eat the food and praise God for it. And those who make the wine will drink the wine in my holy courtyards. And he says, Next verse, walk out of the gates, get going. Get the road ready for the people. Build the highway. Get at it. Clear the debris. He's instructing guys. Hoist high a flag. A signal to all the people. Yes, God has broadcast to all the world. Tell daughter Zion, look, your Savior comes. Ready to what? 
to do what he has said he will do. Prepared to complete what he promised. Zion will be called new names. Holy people. God redeemed. Speak in other tongues. Come on, say something. Say something. I'm big. Ah. You're going to get new names. You're going to get new names. Oh, Yala Bakus. You make my life so beautiful. For as you are. Like never see no harm. The glory. 
against you. It shall be held in judgment. You are the anointed hey, of the Lord. You are a city on a hill. You have a golden cup in his hands. The one he shows up in the whole nation and the rest of the nations of the world. You are the head and of the tail. You are above and of the beast. You are more than a conqueror. By Christ who strengthens you, you are a just one. Your light shines. Your path shines brighter and brighter. And to a perfect day, you are a success. Oh, I'm a success. Think. Athlete has pushed for position. 
Then our gods and delegates meet for summit talks. The God deniers, the Messiah defiers. Let's get free of God. Cast lots from the Messiah. Heaven throne, God breaks out laughing. At first, he's amused at their presumption. Next verse. Then he gets good and angry. <laughs> he's amused. Because he can't imagine that the devil can fail you. don't move out. We have to see them come to Christ. Give God two minutes. Don't go. Come. He said today I want to give my life to Christ. Come. 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 Yeah. Come. Please give them a minute to come. <laughs> the devil thought you are going to hell. <laughs> Send the devil. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I'm laughing at the devil now. He thought he had this one. Come on, stand there. There are more people. I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! There's another one coming! <laughs> Come on! Zangulero, we o senge Yesu. Who knows that song? Come on, repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, there is no better day. There is no better moment. No better hour than there is right now to accept you as my life. Tonight, I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that your Savior and Lord that you died for my sins and rose again for my justification and to life from today I accept you with all my heart with all my soul and with all my strength Amen The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International 
For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Venero, make manifest.